Two big storms will be coming to the United States over the next few days, and these will bring some big problems, including the risk of severe weather and the potential for major flooding. Additionally, a heat wave will continue to soar across the United States, and the tropics are about to heat up in a big way, as we are anticipating the potential for tropical storms, maybe even hurricanes, over the next few weeks in the Atlantic Ocean, and some of these could cause impacts to land. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States. States over the next seven days and we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and back over in the northern plains we actually had a big mesoscale convective system form last night which brought a lot of damaging winds even a few tornado warnings back over in south and north Dakota and this is an area that we are expecting a bunch of severe weather over the next few days including the potential of all hazards of severe weather and this should continue at least through Sunday so an active stretch of weather is ahead back over in the northern plains and then eventually by this weekend I think that severe weather will really start to shift further to the east, perhaps impacting the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. The East Coast is also very interesting right now. We got a lot of moisture in this area, and we are actually watching for a potential tropical storm to develop over the next few days just off the coast of the Carolinas. Even if a tropical system doesn't form, we are talking about the potential for major flooding anywhere around or just east of the Appalachian Mountains, and we'll talk more about this in just a moment. And the tropics are beginning to heat up very quickly across the Atlantic Ocean, which really should not be any surprise as we are now getting closer to the peak of hurricane season. There are currently three areas that we are watching for across the Atlantic Ocean. First off, Tropical Storm Dexter is currently moving out to sea, not expected to bring major impacts to the United States. However, the other two areas of development definitely could pose some big concerns. So the first one is just off the coast of the Carolinas right now, which has a medium chance of developing, so about a 50-50 shot or so. If this does develop, we are more, most likely just going to be talking about a ton of rainfall along the East Coast, mainly near the Carolinas. If it does not develop, we are still talking about a lot of rain in the southeast that will still come out of this particular disturbance because of all the moisture. So regardless of development, this is going to cause problems. The other storm system is back over in the central Atlantic Ocean. This is currently a tropical wave that just came off the coast of Africa just a couple of days ago, and this also has a medium chance of development, but notice how the cone of uncertainty isn't really pointing towards the United States. I do think there's a pretty good chance that this system will stay out to sea, but I do think there's going to be another tropical wave behind this that will have a chance of going towards the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean. That probably will not happen until around August 15th to August 20th. However, we have already taken note, that, at least from the Climate Prediction Center, that yes, there could be something that does go into this area sometime during that time frame. So definitely stay alert here if you're over in the Caribbean. We are going to keep a very close eye on you guys, as there could be a tropical storm or hurricane threat at some point later this month. And on top of that, if something goes into the Caribbean or even near the Caribbean Sea, we could have some problems in the United States as well. Now, this right here is a group of ensemble members, which will basically show us the potential track and intensity if a storm were to develop. This is what it looks like just over the next 48 hours. So notice a low pressure system forming back over in the central Atlantic Ocean. Tropical Storm Dexter continues to move northeast and will eventually become post-tropical cyclone. And then back off the coast of the Carolinas, a low pressure system will be forming there. As we get closer to the end of the week, going into early next week, we are anticipating a potential tropical system develop just off the coast of the Carolinas, which would likely track to the northeast, but it will basically be stationary for the next few days, which means a lot of rain could fall back over in the Carolinas. The other storm system in the central Atlantic Ocean will likely stay out to sea, does not seem to be a big concern for the United States, but could cause problems back over in Bermuda. And then eventually by the very tail end of next week, we could have another tropical wave try to develop over here in the central and western Atlantic Ocean, which could eventually cause problems for the Lesser Antilles. The water Water temperatures are extremely warm right now across the Gulf and also in the Western Atlantic Ocean. So if anything forms, we could have some big problems on our hands. So definitely something to keep in mind. I do want to point out, though, that there is a lot of dry air right now, even in the main development region, which could actually cause problems for even development in general. So let's hope that dry air continues. But at least for now, it is a very favorable environment back over in the Gulf and the Caribbean, assuming we have no dry air. So over the next 48 hours, we are anticipating the showers and thunderstorms to continue across the Carolinas and the southeast and this is going to be pretty slow moving showers and thunderstorms which could lead to the potential for flooding in these areas tonight and as well as tomorrow i think a lot of this will be localized and mostly in low-lying areas but turn around don't drown on the roadways most areas will pick up anywhere from you know a tenth of an inch of rain maybe up to a couple inches of rain but there will be localized locations especially near the coastline of south and north carolina perhaps even back over northern north carolina and southern virginia that could pick up anywhere from two all the way up to six to maybe seven inches 
of rainfall just over the next 48 hours. So we could be talking about some dangerous flooding in the low-lying areas here. Also, I just want to give you all a quick heads up. There's a lot of social media buzz because of multiple computer models showing a big-time hurricane entering the Gulf or hitting Florida. I do want to point out that most of these model runs that you are seeing on social media are 10 to 15 days out. There's no skill in forecasting tropical systems that far out. It is a friendly reminder. We have this happen literally every single year. Make sure you are using trustworthy sources. We will keep you posted with the latest when it comes to the tropics and if anything does form. I do think there is a chance again of a hurricane at some point here over the next couple weeks. Maybe it happens in this time frame. We just absolutely have no clue what is going to happen as we have no tropical wave right now in the Atlantic Ocean to promote this particular system for happening. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Wednesday, and we have a marginal threat of severe weather in the central plains and back into the Midwest, where we'll likely have widespread storms, but the biggest concern is just going to be isolated to perhaps scatter damaging winds and some large hail, perhaps a low-end tornado risk as well. This is really the main corridor to be keeping a close eye on. I do think, generally speaking, there is a chance for a slight risk of severe weather in this area for wind and hail. I do think the tornado risk, again, will be low. Just stay weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings. By Thursday, the threat of severe weather continues across the northern plains in the Midwest with a slight risk of severe weather in place, which does include Montana and the Dakotas, where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table, including scattered damaging winds. Even the potential for very large hail will exist, which means hail up to the size of apples back over in far western North Dakota. That does include Bismarck, and there's also a chance for a couple of tornadoes. For right now, the Storm Prediction Center has a 2% tornado risk, but I would not be surprised if this grows a little bit more and eventually becomes a 5% tornado risk, as I do think we'll have a favorable environment for tornadoes. But it will come down to the timing of storm initiation and also our storm mode. Now, Friday looks very interesting as of right now. The Storm Prediction Center has already gone ahead and issued an enhanced risk of severe weather, which is a level 3 out of 5 on our severe weather scale. That is going to include areas near Fargo in North Dakota, all the way back over towards Aberdeen, South Dakota, northwestern Minnesota also included in that. Marginal threat goes all the way into Nebraska, Iowa, and western Wisconsin, where significant severe weather appears likely with significant damaging winds, very large hail, and a few tornadoes being a possibility. This is definitely a day that I do think we'll have a live stream for, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. And then Saturday's risk of severe weather should be geared towards the Midwest, where more severe weather with damaging winds, hail, and maybe even a couple of tornadoes will be a possibility. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather, beginning with what's happening today. Should see some scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms this morning into the afternoon in Minnesota, and then eventually by around 4, 5, 6 o'clock, we'll have a bunch of storms firing off back over in South Dakota and also Southwest Minnesota. These storms are going to cluster together very quickly, so I do think the tornado risk is going to stay low, but large hail and damaging winds should be a concern, and then eventually by the late evening hours, we may have a small line of storms going towards Des Moines, Iowa, which would eventually fall apart as it heads in the direction of Davenport. Now, as we go into Thursday, the threat of severe weather will appear very likely, especially if you're back over North Dakota, where a line of thunderstorms appears likely. This does not appear to be a big tornado day. Again, it's going to come down to storm mode. We could have one or two storms on the southern edge of this line, producing more elevated tornado threat, but generally speaking, I think damaging winds and very large hail are going to be the biggest concern. And keep in mind, the month of August is usually lines of thunderstorms. This is a very common trend, especially for the northern plains this time of the year. What's a bit of a different story is Friday. Right now, this is the Rufus model, kind of indicating that during the morning, and even during the mid to late afternoon, we don't have a whole lot of storms, just some scattered showers and thunderstorms and isolated severe weather being a possibility. But the magic hour, around 7 to 8 o'clock, storms really explode, especially back over in South Dakota near Aberdeen and also back towards Fargo in North Dakota, where significant hail and wind would be in play and the potential for a few tornadoes, maybe even an isolated strong tornado as well if we have discrete storms, which I think we'll have at least one or two. And then this will eventually become linear by around 11 to 12 o'clock as it moves into Minnesota. Minnesota, producing significant damaging winds that would likely also impact the Twin Cities at some point Friday night into Saturday morning. And then by Saturday, we are right into the Midwest where more severe weather appears likely, which we'll talk more in detail about in a future forecast. And beyond Friday, we are expecting severe weather to continue as we go into Saturday as a low pressure system will spin back up in Canada. This should help wind shear back over in the Midwest, and that could lead to damaging winds, hail, and the potential for a couple of tornadoes. So get ready if you're in Iowa, Wisconsin, maybe even northern Illinois 
Illinois, Southeast Minnesota on Saturday for some severe weather. Sunday may have at least a little bit of severe weather back over in the Midwest and through the Ohio Valley, but it, it's very uncertain as of right now what we'll be talking about on that day. I think more than anything, at least for now, it looks like it's going to be isolated severe weather. And then by Monday and Tuesday, we'll start to clear out again back over in the Northern Plains in the Midwest. And nice weather should return at least for a day or two before the eventual return of at least more some isolated severe weather in those areas. And then after that, the tropics could be heating up here pretty soon. Again, we've already talked about this a little bit, but I do think a tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane, is going to be in our future somewhere in the Gulf or even back over in the Caribbean at sometime in mid to late August. And our heat wave is about to get a lot worse across the United States. Our temperature anomalies are indicating well above average temperatures are likely by Friday of this week, anywhere from the Midwest and the Northern Plains back into the four corner states. This should continue into the weekend, and then by early next week, slightly cooler weather will come into play as that low pressure system moves through the Midwest, and that is going to be basically following after the severe weather that we'll be seeing. Temperatures will be just slightly above or below average, depending on where you are as we go into the middle of next week, and then it looks like above average temperatures will make another big return by the middle of August. So get ready for a hot stretch of weather, cold weather, not really on the horizon for most of us, unless you are in the Midwest or the Central or Northern Plains, and even then, does not look like it's going to be a major weather pattern change. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I am officially back from vacation. If you didn't notice, I am back. We are going to be back to pretty much almost daily weather forecasts as long as it's needed. And then live streams do appear at least possible here over the next few days. I do think Friday and Saturday will likely be live stream days. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.